Hello and welcome to Weld Fever. I'm Dan, your host. Hey, today we're going to be talking about the MIG welding machine and how to set it up properly. We're going to use the chart that's included in the machine and also we're going to learn how to adjust the settings by sight and sound. So stick with me. Here we go. Okay, so first let me introduce you to the machine I'll be using today. This is a Lincoln Electric Weld Pack 175 HD. Uh, it's neither the bottom of the barrel nor the top of the line. It's something uh, comfortably in between. Uh, given the fact that it's made by a reputable uh, manufacturer, I have found the machine to work well and I've had no complaints about it thus far. Uh, now, this machine along with just about every somewhat new MIG machine out there comes with a chart and usually that chart is located right under the uh, lid or somewhere about there of where you would change the wire so without further ado let's flip up that chart and take a look at it okay so as you can see I have the machine open now and you can see this is where the wire is uh, spooled into the machine and the uh, internals okay so here is the welding chart what is this chart for well it tells you the suggested settings for welding now most of these lower cost kind of middle of the road to bottom of the barrel welders uh, have a series of settings usually two dials and one of the dials is for wire speed and the other dial is for voltage now this chart here tells you which settings, which uh, settings to put those dials on according to the thickness of the material that you're going to weld. Now this machine is uh, 175 amps and the way that translates into it, it's, that's the amount of power that it has to weld. But being that it's a MIG machine, of course, uh, everything is measured in voltage in terms of uh, setting the machine up which can be a little bit confusing and so that's why these charts are created to make it as user friendly as possible. The problem that I find with these charts is that sometimes they uh, will end uh, a little bit prematurely and what I mean by that is they sometimes will say that a certain thickness is out of its range or capability when in fact uh, you can get uh, a little bit more out of your machine, meaning you can usually weld uh, things that are a little bit thicker out of the range, not extremely, but a little bit, uh, if you do the right technique and of course if you do multiple passes. These weld settings are suggested for single pass runs, uh, in which case of course you couldn't do anything much more than in this particular machine, I think it's saying 5 16th with uh, gasless flux cord welding and as far as MIG is concerned it says this the uh, thickest you should really attempt anything is a 10 gauge which is not very much at all it's that's just uh, you know just a little bit uh, around an eighth of an inch so obviously you can do more with multiple pass okay before we go any further in this video there's something extremely important that I want to touch on that can have major problems for your project for your MIG welding and that is this little guy here the tensioning nut or tensioning screw that holds the spool in place now if you have it too loose your spool will wind down and erratically and you'll have wire everywhere. They'll have what they call bird's nest because it'll be clumps of wire that just go uncontrollably and you know once you get these things unraveled good luck trying to put it back. It's basically wasted wire. But the other thing is and this is probably even more important in terms of your performance is you don't want that nut to be too tight. If that nut is too tight your wire will not feed properly and if that happens you'll know it right away because your wire will go slow for one and it'll appear as if though it is dripping onto the plate as opposed to sputtering in. It's kind of a strange thing but what will happen is 
you'll notice it. It'll glob down onto the plate. It'll drip onto the plate rather than hitting it and, and bonding to it like it normally does. Uh, it'll glob to it and it'll make kind of a sort of a hissing sound. Anyway, long story short, just make sure that this nut is not too tight, not too loose. Make sure that your uh, you're able to your spool is able to rotate freely. It'll make all the difference in the world. Trust me. Okay, to uh, demonstrate what I've been talking about, I'm going to actually go ahead and go through some extreme examples here, so that we can so I can show you how definitely the sound of this thing will cue you into whether or not something is right or wrong. So I'm going to start with a D setting which is I have an A, B, C, D and E setting on my machine so D is the second to the hottest. I won't really get into uh, explaining to you how you figure out what the voltage is for D. I don't think that's important on this. If you have any questions about that send me an email. I'll be glad to explain it to you. Uh, you can send it to uh, uh, weldfever at gmail.com or just go to weldfever.com and you can uh, ask me in the comments section but in either case uh, also if you're interested in figuring calculating how uh, your wire speed what exactly your wire speed is at your particular gun because all guns and all machines are a little different uh, also send me an email weldfever.com and uh, hit the comments box or I'll send it directly at uh, weldfever at gmail.com and I'll be glad to explain it to you. Anyway, back to it. So I'm on a D setting and I'm going to set the machine, I'm going to set the wire feed speed all the way to the number one setting and let's see what happens. I'm sure this is going to be kind of crazy. Alright, here we go. Okay, I don't think much explanation is needed there. You can see that what happens is it's clearly not enough wire speed for the voltage. It kind of hits and melts and doesn't really do too much. And it hits and melts and it's waiting for more wire to come in. It's not. It's just not fast enough. So it's pretty much useless. So now I'm going to crank it up to a number four setting, and we'll see how. Actually, I'll make it a number three setting, and we'll see how that goes. Here we go. Okay, it's, it's definitely uh, usable, it's workable, but if you could hear it, and I'm sure you could, it's making a lot of, a, a lot of sputtering sounds. It's a rough arc. And if you notice, the weld bead is a little on the high side, even though I was taking my time and really, uh, you know, going slow. So let's go ahead and try and crank this up from a 3 to a 5. Let's see what that does for us. Okay, I have to say that was pretty good, actually. Uh, the sound was clear, clear crisp, uh, crackling, if you will, uh, the bacon frying sound. Uh, it wasn't bad. The weld bead looks good. It's a little high for my liking, but I guess I could have probably slowed it down a little bit more. But okay, let's try a 7. See what that does for us. Okay, could you hear the sputtering on that one? That one was sputtering only for a different reason because it's almost as if though the wire is trying to 
the voltage can't keep up with the amount of wire speed going in there and so you can tell that already we probably crossed the threshold here we're probably a little too far but just for the sake of argument let's take it up to a nine and see what happens there Okay. Wow, right? A lot of sputter, a lot of spatter, a lot of stuff being shot all around. I took one on the leg right now. <laughs> took one for the team here. Uh, yeah, and look at how high that weld bead is. It's huge. I mean, it's just, and I was going slow, but it is just sticking way up there. I mean, that is pretty obvious. If you get something like that, that's just spattering violently and looks like a kind of a flasher flashing light show you know like a strobe light that you're way too fast and you need to dial down quickly so we know now that a seven was too much a five was okay let's for the sake of argument go to a six setting and see where we're at there Okay, so here are the welds side by side. This was the one setting followed by the three setting, which was obviously not enough. I mean, nothing was really coming out here. Just looking at it visually, you can tell there's a problem. Then we went from a three to a five. This was okay. Uh, you could hear that it was kind of uh, not quite there. Uh, it was sputtering a little bit. Um, and the weld bead is a little bit eh, not so not so built up like we would like it. Then from there we went to a seven. That was okay. Uh, I I did like the way uh, it performed. It uh, was going a little bit uh, a little bit much. Uh, the weld bead was a little high, but it was okay, and it was the best of the bunch. And then, of course, we went all the way to a 9 with this one. And you can see how this looks like a miniature loaf of bread or something. I mean, it is just, it's really high up. It's really high at the top here. A lot of uh, weld being deposited because of the rate being so, so great. And so what we end up with is just a really high weld that's not the best. And finally, we dialed into, since 7 was... Uh, five was not enough, and seven was eh, maybe a little on the too much side. We were able to dial into a six here, and that six was probably the best setting of them all. The weld height, uh, the bead was sufficient, but not too much. The penetration was good, and then you can see where I where I ended here. I ended abruptly, so you can see just how much it's penetrating into the plate, uh, and everything was really really good about that. So. Without using the chart, we were able to dial into uh, a nice setting for the D voltage just based on sight and sound. And that's kind of the point of this is that you can do that. Now, could we go to the E setting? Yes, we could. Should we do that? If you'd like to, let's do it. Okay, so that's all the time we're going to have for now. Uh, I am going to go ahead and do those uh, added settings in the next video, so be looking for part two. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please rate, subscribe, and uh, comment on this if you did. Make sure to visit my website, weldfever.com, for more, or if you have any questions, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.